Okay, I think it goes back to our evolutionary past. Ever since we became manusia, homo sapiens, ever since we began to start thinking, we began to see, however dimly, that everything was not right, that things were wrong. And there's a lot of things we feared. Yeah, and their life was short, life was brutish, food was difficult to get, yeah, the nature was against us. Yeah, everything was stacked up against the human being. Yeah, the, yeah, how we succeeded, only yesterday I was reading that, remember we were talking about the loba, the dosa and the moha, we talked about the delusion, the uh, greed, and the aversion. Yeah. Yeah? It is that which helped us to get, come to this civilization. It is our greed, it is our craving, it is our materialism. Remember we were talking as we were progressing materially, we were deteriorating spiritually. Okay. Now success is not only do you progress materially, there's nothing wrong with materialism, nothing wrong. It's when we abuse it. They had materialism, but they also had deep spirituality, the great kindness and so on. But today, very little evidence of that. There is evidence. There are people yes. who are very highly developed beings, but the majority of us are going downhill. There's the mismatch between materialism and spirituality. So in that early times, a uh, million years ago, maybe uh, 100,000 years ago, our ancestors looked around and thought everything was stacked against them. Mm. You know? But they felt, again, in their dim understanding that we are not alone in the universe. While there are beings that we can see, there are beings we imagine which we cannot see, who are hiding behind trees, who are in the shadows, who uh, appear as huge trees, you know. We began to conceive of these as more powerful than a thunder, lightning, rain, you know. All of these uh, earthquakes, all these forces were stacked up against us. They were more powerful, but we also recognized something in us. We have greed and we have cunning. <laughs> Therefore, we can be bribed. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm maybe getting too close to modern world, but, but we can be bright. They, in their dim understanding, began to see that if we could get these forces on our side, all right, they can, they can help us to get what we want. They can stop the rain, they can, you know. So we began to placate. Animism begins. We people these forces of nature with human characteristics, all right? And we plead and therefore begin, religion begins. So we go for refuge, we go for security in these. Eventually, animism becomes polytheism, polytheism becomes monotheism. We conceive of a single God. And we go to this single God for refuge, to help us, to protect us, to, you know, to get rid of whatever. So we have faith, we have hope. The Buddha comes along and he says, no, none of these, these are all evolutionary things, but these are not reality. What he did say was, they cannot save you. Ultimately, they cannot save you. In the short run, yes. All right? They were placebos. Then the Buddha says, however, you are manusya. You have a mind which can be developed. All right? And with that mind, you have to begin to understand how the universe operates. When you understand how the universe operates, you will understand what is thunder, lightning, rain. You will understand what these things are. And you will understand that you can use technology to overcome these things. But 
you cannot use technology to help you escape from the wheel of life. All right? So what you need to do is to develop your understanding and go about to kill, to kill the pig. Yeah. To kill the pig, the cock, and the snake. Right. Yeah? And that needs your human intelligence. All right. To do that, you don't know how. All right? You don't know how. So you need somebody who has trodden the path. The Buddha uses a beautiful story to explain this. He says there is a man who's walking in the forest. He's all alone. And uh, as he walks through the forest, he comes through a place which is completely covered with vegetation. So using a, a, a knife, he cuts through the vegetation right. and he discovers an ancient city that had existed there that was then forgotten. So he comes back and tells the king, I will show you a way where you can discover an ancient city. So the king sends his men, discovers the city and finds out it was a grand civilization that had existed before. The Buddha says, similarly, the knowledge of the truth, the knowledge of how the universe operates was already there had been discovered by those before me. You see? So, this is the teaching of the Buddhas. Yes. All right? There were Buddhas before us. We are going back to our original discussion. There were Buddhas before me. Yes. They had discovered the Dharma. What is Dharma? That which upholds the universe. All right? And those facts... Those uh, uh, happenings and those causes had been discovered, but forgotten, lost. I rediscovered. Yeah. That is why I am now a Buddha. There's nothing to stop you from following me, to discover the same civilization. So, don't you come to the refuge. Come to me for refuge, yes, but not to save you. Yeah? No one saves us but ourselves. No one can and no one may. We ourselves must walk the path. The Buddhas merely show the way. So refuge here does not mean a surrender, all right, and faith, but it means an intelligent understanding that if I follow your path, I will find that city. I will find the secret of happiness. The Buddha recognized that it was not easy. Initially, he was disinclined to share this knowledge of this, the civilization because he said people won't understand. Then, then he reflected there are people with little dust in their eyes. So they will understand. So it was not a waste of time. All right? And as a result, we have the Dhamma. So when we go to the Buddha for refuge, we do not go as uh, abject beings, you know, kneeling down, praying, and telling the Buddha, please save me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, incidentally, when we do the puja, there is one gata, there's one verse which we recite. Kayena vacha chittena, Pamadena mayakatang achayang kamame bante buri panya tatagata. Kain, if, if by speech, you know, by thought, speech and action covers everything, yeah? If by speech, thought or action I have wronged in any way, may the Buddha forgive me. Buddha cannot forgive you. The Buddha cannot forgive you. He's not even there to forgive you. What do you mean when you say this? What you mean is, I acknowledge my wrongdoing. Yeah, I acknowledge, I bring it to the front, I recognize it for what it is. I will not do it again. So, refuge in the Buddha simply means you are coming there for the assurance yeah, that this is the path that will lead me out of samsara.
So I place my faith in the teaching. The Buddha says, he who sees the Dhamma sees me. So you are actually placing your faith in the Dharma that he taught. Okay? And not enough just to keep the holy books on your head. Remember he said the, 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 the river. You know, a man is going on a long journey. And he comes to a river which is flooded. He has two options. He can stay on this side, kneel down, bow down a hundred times and say to God, please God, make that side come this side. That bank come to this side. Or the river to disappear. Obviously, it cannot be. However, he has another option. Use his own wits. Use his own two hands, his brains. Cut down some bamboo. Tie the bamboo together. Create a raft. And row himself across. Effort. No one saves us but ourselves. No one can and no one may. Buddhas merely show the way. So once you have got across to the other side, don't carry the raft on your head. Don't keep your holy books in the shelf. They are just means to get you across. So even the Buddha is a refuge to that extent. At the end of the day, you are your own master. The Buddhas merely show the way. So this is what it means when we say we are going for refuge. We are not going for refuge as slaves. We are not going for refuge as abject beings who are crawling underneath. 